Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at Decision Desk HQ, and today we'll be taking a look at how the 2024 Senate map is shaping up, sharing insights just as we did in our look at the 2024 presidential election, which, if you haven't already, you can check out by clicking the link in the top right-hand corner. First things first, the 2024 Senate map is just brutal for the Democratic Party. Of the 34 seats on the ballot, 23 are currently represented by Democratic caucus members. Of the 10 presumed Senate battleground states shown on screen here, Democrats are defending eight of them, including three that Trump won twice, Ohio, Montana, and West Virginia. These states' strong Republican lean increases the challenge for the incumbent Democrats to win re-election, especially in an era of decreased split-ticket voting. And that's even with considering that these incumbents have historically overperformed in these states. Yet perhaps the most grim way of looking at it for the Democratic Party is that even if we operate under the hypothetical scenario in which Democrats hold the White House in 2024, and therefore continue to hold the tie-breaking vice presidential vote as they do now, they still must win all of the states that Biden won in 2020 that you see here, plus two more to reach just 50 seats. They'd need to win three more to maintain their 51 to 49 seat majority that they have right now. Now, to analyze these races even further, DDHQ considers past election results, the expected national political environment, and candidate quality in past elections through split ticket war. For all of my baseball junkies out there, split ticket war operates very similar to how war or wins above replacement does in baseball. It assesses the strength of a candidate compared to their opposition by quantifying the divergence of outcomes from the expected performance of a generic set of nominees. Or in simpler terms, imagine you nominate the most standard average candidate you possibly can for an election. Split Ticket War tells us how much better or worse a specific candidate is doing compared to this average candidate, considering the actual election results. It's like grading a student's performance by comparing it to what you'd expect from an average student. This metric is considered state-of-the-art in evaluating the electoral strength of political candidates, independent of external influencing factors. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get to the part of the video that you most likely came for a race-by-race race analysis. Let's start in the state of Arizona. Incumbent independent Senator Kirsten Sinema's departure from the Democratic Party makes her race unpredictable. Given her declining approval rating, negative 29 net approval among Democrats after the party switch, historical overperformer Representative Ruben Gallego is now a leading contender for the Democratic nomination. Meanwhile, Republicans seem likely to nominate Carrie Lake, who underperformed fundamentals in her surprising 2022 loss in the gubernatorial election. And so, even accounting for a potentially weak Republican nominee, the potential of a three-way race and current unknowns mean this race at least temporarily defaults to toss-up. Moving on to Florida, the state has become increasingly challenging for Democrats in recent years. Republicans dominated in 2022 even as Democrats outperformed expectations nationally. GOP candidates Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio were re-elected by 19 and 16 points respectively, in what many labeled as a localized red wave. Now in 2024, the most likely Democratic nominee at this point is former Congresswoman Debbie Mukarzel Powell to take on incumbent Republican Senator Rick Scott, who had an R plus 2.1 war when he was first elected in 2018. Mukarzel Powell, on the other hand, notably, is a historical underperformer with a war score averaging R plus 7.1. And so, given the 2022 election results and weakening support for Democrats among Hispanic voters, Florida receives a likely Republican rating. In Ohio, Senator Sherrod Brown had a war score of D plus 1.2 in 2018, making him a decent overperformer. But make no mistake, Brown remains as vulnerable as any other Trump state Democrat up in 2024. 
He benefited from favorable national political climates for Democrats in 2006, 2012, and 2018, and declining split ticket voting nationwide poses a real challenge. Republican Susan Collins from Maine was the only senator elected in a state won by the opposing party's presidential candidate in 2020. And for all of those reasons, Ohio starts as likely Republican as well. Moving over to the state of Pennsylvania, Senator Bob Casey Jr. earned a strong D plus three war score in 2018. David McCormick, who lost the 2022 GOP primary, seems likely to become the party's nominee this time around and has a pretty electable profile, so to speak. However, Casey's track record suggests real strength, having won six consecutive statewide elections, five of which by double-digit margins. Given the state's partisan lean and Casey's potential to outperform Biden, Pennsylvania's Senate race leans Democratic. Over to the West, Michigan, Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow is retiring, and Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin leads the Democratic primary right now. She notably boasts a very strong average war score of D plus 3.1 across her past three races, and given Biden's expected strength in Michigan, Slotkin's history as an overperformer, and the weakness of the state's Republican Party in recent election cycles, Michigan's Senate race starts as likely Democrat. Moving on to Montana, Democratic Senator John Tester, who had an exceptionally strong D plus 11 war score in 2018, faces one of the Democratic Party's toughest tests in Trump plus 16 Montana. A repeat challenge from Republican Congressman Matt Rosendale, who Tester defeated by three and a half points in 2018, and who may seek the GOP nomination again, would probably help Tester's chances. That's a big reason why 11 Republican senators, including Steve Daines of Montana, have already endorsed businessman and retired Navy SEAL Tim Sheehy for the Republican nomination. Montana is a strongly Republican state at the federal level, having voted for a Republican presidential candidate by double digits in five of the last six presidential elections. And whether it be Sheehy or Rosendale, with split-ticket voting at historic lows across the country, Montana leans Republican. Next up, although she won in 2018, Nevada Senator Jackie Rosen, a Democrat, was not especially a strong candidate, with an R plus 2 war score. Fellow Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto recently won a narrow victory in 2022, despite the state's high inflation and unemployment. Ultimately, while its significant share of Hispanic voters who have trended Republican in the Trump era could challenge Rosen, pro-choice ballot efforts could also boost Democratic turnout, and therefore Nevada starts as lean Democrat. Texas Senator Ted Cruz underperformed in 2018 with a war score of D plus 4.4, but still managed to fend off Beto O'Rourke's strong challenge by a margin of 2.6%. Democratic Congressman Colin Allred, who enjoys an average war score of D plus 2.7, seems poised to try and improve on what O'Rourke started, and will likely be aided by droves of liberal donor support. That being said, Cruz has a clear advantage given Texas's historical partisan tilt on the presidential level, and he could benefit even more from pro-Trump shifts among Hispanic voters, with the former president likely to headline at the top of the ticket in 2024. The Texas Senate race therefore begins as likely Republican. Penultimately, the state of West Virginia, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin exceeded all expectations in 2018 with a war score of D plus 31. Still, West Virginia is one of the most Republican states in the nation, having voted for Trump by 42 points in 2016, the largest margin of any state, and then 39 points in 2020. To make matters even more difficult for Democrats, presumptive Republican nominee Jim Justice is the sitting Republican governor in West Virginia, and enjoys much more favorable ratings among the West Virginian electorate than Manchin does. On that note, the senator has filed paperwork to run in 2024, but says he will not make a final decision until the end of this year. If he doesn't run, this should be one of the easiest Republican flips in recent memory, 
and even if he does, justice will be heavily favored. West Virginia starts at Save Republican. Finally, in Wisconsin, Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin slightly overperformed in 2018 with a D plus 1.2 war score. The Republican primary field is still relatively open at this point in time, and Baldwin's potential to slightly outperform Biden suggests that there may be an edge here for her campaign. As of now, it leans Democrat. That is all for this Decision Desk HQ video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you did indeed like it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also check out more content from our channel here, and we'll catch you next time.